Hey guys, Andos Gaming here and welcome back to the channel. Hope you are having a good day or night wherever you are in the world. In today's episode, we are going to talk about game sense. Game sense is something we all want to improve, however, it can be quite difficult at times. In my opinion, it's easier to get good at mechanics. You just need to practice the motion over and over again and it kind of becomes like a muscle memory. However, with game sense, it's something you need to develop with specific experiences learning from your mistakes and watching how other players approach situations. The ultimate goal of a lot of players is to get good at split second decision making. There's always moments where I'm like, why did I do that? I'm not sure if you guys go through this as well. I often ask myself questions like, how do I get better at decision making? Where do I start? How do I actually improve my game sense? Well, not to worry, I've done some research. In today's episode, we are going to go over some techniques that have been very useful to me that are often used by the pros to get an edge over the competition. We'll also cover other topics like movement and how to hold stairs the correct way. I hope you guys enjoy today's episode. By the end of the video, you should be able to use these tips to help you get better results on Warzone. With the intro out of the way, let's continue. Okay, one super important concept that pros often use is being able to make mental images in your head on how enemies will approach situations. Too often, we are going into gunfights with brute force and trying to muscle our way through. You need to be thinking on how enemies will react, how enemies will move, what position your target will take before you actually take the gunfight or during transitions. This is super important for isolating fights, predicting where targets will appear so you can pre-aim or put yourself in a good position. It's super beneficial to think and predict on how enemies Enemies will approach you to help you with your decision making. At this point of the game, everyone is pretty decent, so just relying on game mechanics can only get you so far. Game sense, positioning, and decision making before or during gunfights are more important than ever. I'm going to break down a couple of simple scenarios to emphasize further about making reads, about making mental images in your mind to give yourself the advantage. In this scenario, I'm going to get into a gunfight. I'm able to predict when the enemy is going to chow me. I'm able to break the target's camera. Let's slow it down and break down the thought process. Oh, that combat scare. Oh, someone's looking at me to my left and right. I pump, I pump. No! At this point, I missed a couple shots, but I could tell the enemy is going to turn this corner. I broke armor at this point. Now I'm thinking the target's behind cover and we'll swing into this gap over here. All right, let's slow it down. At this point, I've checked this picking spot. It didn't work out. I can't see the target. In my mind, I'm trying to think if I was in the enemy's shoes, how would I push in this situation? 100% I would push this corner over here. So knowing that, I break the target's camera by sliding into the enemy. This is how you break people's cameras. Just slide into them when they're pushing you. As you can see, the target is looking to the right. I'm ready to attack and out of sight. Even in fast paced gunfires, try to think about how targets will push you. What flanks they will use to attack you or if you were them, how would you attack? Try to build a mental image in your head as to where the target is. With all the intel going through your mind, try to use that information to plan your next move. The approach is you want to play chess while your enemy is playing checkers. Being a couple steps ahead can make you lethal on the war zone. Let's break down another scenario to emphasize this further. In this scenario, I use the bounty to my advantage and make some reads to save time and effort. Using bounties and UAVs is the most efficient way to gather intel in war zone. I notice a bounty to my right. Straight away, I play a quick scenario in my head. I don't want to let the enemy go upstairs, it's just going to cause issues later. Knowing that, I don't get my loadout and quickly push the building. If I was the target, I would definitely take this building. It just seems like the safest spot, so I try to be proactive. Basically, at this point, I'm making a mental image in my head that the target will appear around the corner. I pre-aim, trust my instincts, and using intel to my advantage to get the easy kill. That may have been a simple scenario, but it's a really good example of just trying to think a couple of steps ahead of the enemy and how it can really benefit you. Before we continue, if you are enjoying the content or find any value throughout the video, please smash that like button. It does help me out a whole heap. Remember to sub to the YouTube channel for more tips and tricks videos so you don't miss out. I also stream on Twitch at Andos Gaming TV. Remember to drop by, Come say hello. I do have a face cam set up and we'll try to answer any questions when possible. It's just good vibes. With that out of the way, let's continue. In this breakdown, we are going to talk about reading rotations. When you pop a UAV, don't just assume the enemy will stay in that specific spot. Targets will always rotate, so it's your job to predict those rotations and best case scenario is to catch people during transitions. I will emphasize what I mean further in the next breakdown. 
So I've popped my UAV. I've got two targets on my left and three targets on my right. I've got a few options. In my head, I want to take the fight with the least amount of risks so I can rack up a high kill gain. I think some of the easiest kills in Warzone is when you catch people mid-transition. Notice how the target located at electronics is outside the circle. This means this enemy needs to rotate in. I'll quickly make a read here that the enemy will probably rotate towards train station to get high ground or access to buy. So I'll trust my judgement and proceed accordingly. It's looking pretty good at the moment. If I was the enemy, I would be heading to train station for that buy or high ground. So I'm really hoping the target will rotate this way, that way I can get an easy pick. Notice how I'm pre-aiming the door. I'm just prepared for this gunfight. In my head, I already have a mental image of the target appearing. I've got the UAV intel as well. I'm ready to shoot to get the easy kill. Couple of key points I wanted to mention. When you have a UAV and you're choosing which enemy to fight, try to go for the easier fights first. This is where you can catch people in transitions, mid rotations, or try to choose fights where the environment is somewhere easier to fight in. Saying that, try to avoid pushing targets who have high ground. Normally those fights just take way too long and people tend to camp those spots, as you may know. Hope you guys enjoyed that breakdown. When it comes to making reads and improving game sense, to be honest, there is so much we can talk about when it comes to good decision making in Warzone, there's just so many variables. I recommend watching like some of your favorite streamers and think, hey, okay, I will do this in these type of situations and see how they play it differently and learn from there. Improving game sense is something I'm really focused on at the moment. As of my journey right now to improve as a Warzone player, it's definitely a top priority to get better at decision making. I think sometimes I can be too aggressive and not think things through. It's a work in progress. Saying that though, I try to make these videos so we can get better together. Comment below on some of the things you want to get better at Warzone at. Please let me know. Anyways, onto some fun stuff now. I'm going to break down a movement scenario and explain my thought process as to what I'm thinking about when fighting three enemies at once. I will provide some tips to help you understand the ego child, when to do it, the thought process behind it, what you should do right after a kill if you don't have an exit plan, and so on. Let's begin. Just to explain the scenario, there are some targets below. I decide to push aggressively and try to get that bounty. I have no idea how many people are in this room. All I know is the bounty is probably pre-aiming this door, so I slide cancel in and try to break the target's camera. Just my luck, there are two enemies in this room. However, the person on the left here is pre-aiming at the window, which is terrific. And the target to my right is pre-aiming the door, just like we predicted. With my slide cancel, I was able to avoid that threat for a couple seconds. I'll go for some headshots and manage to get the first down. All right, now we have to worry about the second target. I'm in a pretty vulnerable spot right now. I need to make something happen to pull this off. I try to add some movement to make myself elusive enough to make the enemy miss while getting my own shots in. I slide cancel to the left and perform a jump shot back to the right to see if this pays off and then this target pops out of nowhere kind of surprised me to be honest probably just finished using the bathroom and decided to join the fight i quickly flick over as a reaction but i'm on zero ammo it's not looking good I managed to break line of sight, get into safety, and change to my AR. At this point, my thought process is I need to ego chill. If I run away, I'm one shot. I don't think I'm going to make it. I'm assuming the enemy will notice that I'm one shot and will chase me through this doorway. I'm going to use that to my advantage and break the enemy's camera and using my movement. Let's see what happens. Hope you guys enjoyed that breakdown. Let's rewind it for a couple seconds, play it in real time, and there are a couple of things I want to mention as well. When fighting multiple targets, remember to utilize movement after each down. If you're versing good players, having that elusive movement between transitions can get you over the line. Remember to ego chow in certain situations. Use the enemy's movement to your advantage when you're on the back foot and break cameras. Basically, you want to jump towards the enemy and get behind them as shown in the example to break cameras. Super useful technique to get you out of sticky situations. Well, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Just some final thoughts about today's topic. Remember to make reads and mental images in your head on how the enemy is going to play. As mentioned, you want to be playing chess while other people are playing checkers. Try to analyze situations a few steps ahead and practice thinking things through to improve your decision making. We will take some time to get used to because we're so used to reacting. However, if you make a conscious effort on your decision making, you should definitely improve. I hope this video has helped you in some kind of way. I did mention I was going to cover on how to hold stairs in war 
war zone but kind of ran out of time i will cover that scenario in a future video if you learn anything new or find any value in today's episode remember to smash that like button it does help me out a lot sub to the youtube channel for more tips and tricks Never. videos and i do stream at andos gaming tv on twitch i'll leave a link in the description remember to drop by and say hello as always i wish you guys all the best and good luck on the war zone